So this video is going to cover how to install um, PHP on your Raspberry Pi. I thought this is an important point to stop for a moment and just think about what we've already done if you've been following my channel and following my videos. And if you haven't been following my videos, maybe to look back at what you should do first before you step forward into installing PHP. Now, the first thing that we all hopefully have is our Raspberry Pi hardware. Now, in for the nature of what we're doing, we're building a web server. Now, the Raspberry Pi is going to be considered our hardware web server. In the previous video that I'll put a link to here, we've um, installed a software web server called Apache. Now, Apache is an incredibly common um, web server. It's probably the most, if not one of the top two most used web servers um, on the internet. And um, it's not ideal for the Raspberry Pi because it can be quite resource intensive. So there are other ones out there that might be a bit quicker for the Raspberry Pi. However, the Raspberry Pi is a learning platform that you take what you've learned and you move on to bigger real live world, real world scenarios. So you could take what you learn here, install it to a big, big server and actually run a real live web server and a real live web service, you know, from what hopefully you'll, you'll learn here. Now, the problem with um, the Apache web server and um, any web server software in general is that it only performs limited functionality. It can produce um, text and a few tables and it can produce um, a few images to the screen. So a very, very basic web page. It can't do anything particularly complicated. If you want to do any real programming, any real processing of user's data, an example of that might be that you may want to take a user's, user, a user's submission form, so type in their, their name, their, their email address, a password, and uh, look at building up a database of users, or maybe sending out like um, a mail shot to users, or you know a comments field where someone can add and it will email somebody. You need a more developed, a more um, heavy duty language. There are many out there that you can use, um, but one of the most common ones um, used out there that's free is PHP. And I'm going to be showing you how to install PHP. Um, if you haven't already um, installed the um, Apache um, web service software, you have to go back and install it first, otherwise this PHP won't work. The next step, which I'm going to show in a later video, is going to be how to install MySQL, which is a database where we store information. So we actually store that data on the hard drive or, or the SD card of a Raspberry Pi. And then hopefully at the end of that, we'll have a fully functioning web server. Now, we can have a website um, at any point, whether or not we've installed Apache, Apache and PHP, Apache, PHP, and MySQL. But the three come together as a real package to create a proper, proper, very interactive website. Okay, so let's get to the nitty gritty. Um, obviously, we should have already installed Apache. I can't stress that enough. Um, but if uh, once that's all been done, we can simply run sudo apt get install PHP, and the current version is five. So I'm just going to pause that for the um, sake of this video uh, in a moment once we see. So it's going to go through, look for any um, packages, any dependencies, and then it will um, ask us if we're going to install it. It's about 16 megs, so quite a large package. And um, it's also going to get a few additional um, dependencies we can see here. So again, I'm going to pause that video just so you don't have to watch the installation process. You can do that yourself. Okay, so once that's finished installing, um, we'll just clear the screen. Now you can run the command php space minus v and it will tell you the current version that it's running and if you get this prompt and this bit of information here, then we know that it's um, been installed successfully. Now the first thing we want to do is we need to create a test page. What we do is if we change into the directory um, slash var slash www, which is the web server directory. If we look at there at the moment, we can see I've got my index.html um, page and then just a couple of images I've got in there for the website I'm running and via my um, Apache web server. And I'm then just going to quickly run the command sudo touch and I'm going to create a file called phptest.php. Okay, we do an ls on that 
and we can see the that file has been created. Then I then create uh, type the command sudo nano, and I'm going to edit the file php test, so it's just a just a blank file. Now I'm going to put on paste bin the link to this file, so you can just copy and paste into it. But essentially, we're going to create a very very basic PHP um, test page. So we're going to create a um, standard HTML um, page, head, um, body of the website. We're going to give the page title test PHP, and this special line here is the um, start of our PHP code. So this uh, bracket question mark PHP shows that below get ready to receive PHP code. So PHP um, brackets semicolon is a special command that will print to the screen all information about the PHP that server that you're running, which you'll see in a moment. And then the question mark um, brackets will close it off. And then we just obviously close off our HTML <coughs> HTML page. So I just save that file. And again, we can just read that so we can see all the content of our file is in there. Okay, so let me just fire up my web browser. Okay, so I'm going to type in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Now, if I just look at the, the root of that, that's the uh, standard index.html page I've created. It's my Clue 1.0, which we'll upgrade a bit later on with a bit of PHP. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to then do forward slash. So within that directory, I'm also going to look for um, a file called php test.php. Now, if you get this, your PHP server's working. Everything you could possibly need to know, I mean, there's just a vast quantity of information. If you don't get this page, then something's gone wrong and it's not working. Okay, so hopefully this is now working. Um, you basically have to go off and learn PHP. This book I've got on the screen here, PHP uh, for Dummies, is what I'd recommend. Um, grab a copy of it, it's great. It's what I learned off of. Okay, one thing you may have to make sure that you remember is that when you're looking at your page, that you're looking at the permissions. So you want to make sure that you have those permissions on that file. Um, and if you need to change those permissions, and it's not um, reading exactly like that, you can change it by doing the following command, chmod. Um, And what you're going to do is you're then going to say uh, 644 and then you're going to give the name of the PHP file and that will change the permissions. To show you how that works, I'll quickly change the permissions to 777 which is like full permissions and you'll see that this changes where the system is given read write, you know, every um, user owner and group is given um, full read write execute, read write execute, read write execute. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is just make sure that we change it back. So we're going to come back here and change this back to 644 to ensure we have the right permissions. And have a look there. And um, it has the same permissions as all the other files. The permissions are important because it basically tells um, the server who can have access to it um, and who can have access to that particular file. And if your permissions are set wrong, you may be blocking access to yourself.